couple in poor Charlotte, Florida, getting their groove on. They designed a house fit for a rock star. It may not be scary from the outside, but this is the house where the boogeyman lives. No, Mike Riley isn't the boogeyman who scares little kids at night. He's the leader of the Port Charlotte rock band, the Boogeyman. And believe me, he still makes people scream. And his house might just make you scream. One of my friends said to me, he said, uh, you've done what your house, what every guy would like to do, but his wife won't let him. So how do you describe such a cacophony? It's rock and roll, rock and roll. I, I wanted to go for like, um, youthful exuberance and challenging the boundaries. And I wanted to go for brilliance and beauty and uh, music. Yeah, this place rocks. And nowhere else does the house rock harder than in the living room. My friend said, you know, it kind of looks a little bit like a, a sitting room for a boudoir. And that's what we went for it. There's a vintage style jukebox in the corner and over 25 guitars on the walls. There's even stuff hanging on the ceiling. He'll see something at a shop that he likes to, to hang on the ceiling, from the ceiling, and uh, he'll get it. So it, the decorating is is a, a constant thing. Billy said she's afraid that the ceiling's gonna cave in if we keep hanging things. Check out this chandelier. It sheds light and can also carry a tune. I had a, a friend who owns a pine shop, and I showed him this, and he said, I can turn this into a light for you. I said, cut it out. And he said, no, really. And we plugged it in, and the daggone thing worked. And uh, just thought it was pretty cool. And what house would be complete without this? Well, I'll tell you what. Can't every good house in America needs a fireman's pole. In the bedroom, you won't find any monsters hiding in this boogeyman's closet. But you might find a pair in this bunch that'll scare the socks off you. It's pretty scary walking down the street when you're a guy in a pair of red shoes. To add dimension to the already colorful house, Mike had local artist Jonathan McDonald add murals in all the rooms. It's his house, it's his home. I try to I try to amplify him. From great musicians to great minds, the hallway is a tribute to people who influence Mike's life. I, I kind of sit here and we have some discussions and, you know, I pretty much ask him, what do you think I should do for today? And he puts his finger up and says, Riley, if you leave the house, that's your first air. Waterfalls in the bathroom give it an offbeat tropical feel. As you can see, we kind of have an unusual bathroom. When you take a shower, you feel like you're in the jungle a little bit. We're just hoping that no creatures come out. I can't believe he let me do it, but he goes through at it. He trusted me to do it. Uh, we were out of town. We came back, and this is what we found. Uh, we've kind of grown to like it a little bit, but uh, it's very different. It really is. The reading room is everything it's cracked up to be. I told Jonathan I'd like the room to look a little bit distressed and a little bit rustic, and um, I walked out of the room, and I came back, and uh, had a big crack in my wall, and uh, I liked it, so he did some more. If this three-bedroom, 1,700-square-foot house wasn't enough for one boogeyman, add nine more to the mix, and you have yourself a boogie and house party. They uh, set up in the living room. Everybody fits very well in there. For Mike, music is a way of life, and he styled his house to suit his rock and roll lifestyle. My favorite thing about the house is that it reflects um, Mike's personality. We love to entertain. Mm -hmm. Something we can share with all our friends. For this boogie and couple, the rock never stops. But why would you want it to when you live in a rock and roll home like this one?